In today's video, we'll go over the upgrades I did to my network in 2022. I'll cover each of the devices I changed and why I changed it. Stick around for the rest of this video if you want to see my latest updates. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification so you'll be notified when there's new content. If you find this video useful, please give it a like and post any questions you may have in the comments below. Unlike prior years where the goal was true performance, the goal for 2022 was actually to simplify things and minimize the amount of different devices and interfaces that I have in my network. I already had great performance, including 10 gigabit, but as things grew, managing multiple devices, given the amount of experimentation I do, became a real chore. And I wanted a solution where I could make easy configuration changes to my network. So that this video makes a bit more sense, let's take a quick look at my original network that was in place at the beginning of 2022. As things have grown over the years, I was running two smaller racks. The first rack being my original 25U rack that I got about 15 years ago, which houses my UPS units, a couple NAS units, a test server, and my Sophos firewall. Above that was a QNAP 10 gigabit unmanaged switch and a hybrid 28 port 10 gig, 1 gig switch from FS. Moving to the top rack where all my feeds come in, I was using a Netgear PoE switch and a D-Link 1 gig unmanaged switch, both which fed into a managed QNAP switch that I was using for aggregation in VLANs. In addition, I was using a Netgear 24 port unmanaged switch, which I was using as a test network. So let's talk about the updates that were made starting with the bottom rack. All the updates are not necessarily in any particular order and just group by rack and location. One of the earlier updates was the USW24 Pro. I had been using a managed switch from FS in my lower rack for quite a while now and it's done a great job. It's an awesome low cost and very powerful managed switch, but as my goal was to simplify as much as possible and to integrate everything into the unified controller, I opted to pick up the USW24 Pro. This switch has 24 1 gig ports and two 10 gig SFP plus ports. Currently I'm in the process of moving this switch to another room so there isn't anything that's actually attached to it. To provide 10 gigabit connectivity to all my devices, I added the USW aggregation switch, which is an 8 port SFP plus 10 gigabit switch. Though it's called an aggregation switch, it can be used as a traditional switch depending on your particular application. I needed this device to aggregate my two NAS units, both of which have 10 gigabit ports, and my test server, which also has a 10 gigabit port. As the NAS and the UPS units stayed in the lower rack, the last item I added was the UDM Pro SE. I actually have two of these, and I'll be adding the second one as a failover device. I'll do a video on that once it's configured and installed. The main reason for this particular upgrade was that despite using decent hardware for my firewall, I was never able to achieve one gigabit internet performance I was paying for with the filtering and IDS IPS enabled in Sophos. I considered using PFSense or Untangle, but in the end I opted to get the UDM Pro SE as there was a lot of benchmarks confirming that it would support one gig or more in internet performance with IDS IPS enabled. And in addition, the inclusion of an 8-port PoE switch, a hard drive bay to support Unify Protect so I could give that a run, and the ability to replace my Unify Cloud Key controller just seemed to be the best way to go. Moving on to the top rack, the main item there was a PoE switch, which I added earlier this year. I was really happy with the Netgear PoE switch that I was using, but I wanted a managed PoE switch to provide additional capabilities in building out my VLAN and test networks. I opted for the Unify USW24 PoE. This is a 24 port managed PoE switch that has 16 PoE plus ports, eight standard LAN ports, and two additional SFP ports to simplify interconnecting for a total of 26 ports in all. It's completely fanless and has a power budget of 95 watts. As a result of using this switch, I was able to eliminate the two unmanaged switches that were being used, as well as the cloud key controller that was now being handled by the UDM SE. Though not a new device, in my top rack is the QNAP QSW M1208-8C, which is a 12 port 10 gigabit managed switch, which I've had for a couple of years. This is still one of my favorite devices and currently it will continue to be a big part of my network. 
Even if I wanted to replace it with a comparable unified device for consistency, they don't make anything in the 12 to 16 10 gigabit port range for anywhere near the price of this device. So for now, this will continue to be at the core of my network. Next was the addition of the third rack in the office. This is a work in process and I only have put a couple of things in it currently. And I plan on expanding this into a test network for 2023. Currently, I do have a couple things in it, starting with the Unify Flex XG. This is sort of a unique product and is one of the few devices I bought from Ubiquiti that's not rack mounted. The XG has four 10 gigabit ports and a single one gigabit port that can be used as a standard port or a PoE plus input port, which allows you to power the device. Attached to the Flex XG's one gigabit port is a Flex Mini. Given Ubiquiti's pricing tends to be a little bit on the high side, the Flex Mini is the lowest cost Unify switch selling for around $29. It's really kind of a unique product. It's real handy for uh, aggregating feeds inside of a room, which is what I'm using it for. I've got several kicking around and use it to aggregate things like devices, gaming consoles, streaming devices, things like that. In the office, I'm using it to attach a network printer, a Netgear access point that's dedicated to Elgato lights, and a mini PC that runs Linux. This device just runs headless and handles my Tailscale subnet router. This year, all of my access points were upgraded to Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. In the house, I recently installed two of the Unify U6 Enterprise access points so that I could take advantage of the speed of 6E. In the garage, I added a U6 Lite to help out with a couple of wireless cameras and some home automation control. For the backyard, I installed a U6 Mesh to provide coverage to the backyard as well as to handle some pool controls that I have back there. And for the last bit of hardware we'll cover, we'll talk quickly about Protect. As I mentioned earlier in this video, one of the reasons I wanted to purchase the UDM Pro SE was to test out and experiment with the Unify Protect. To test this out, I added a couple of the lower end Unify cameras because their cameras are really expensive just to get a better understanding of how their ecosystem and their cameras perform. So I picked up a G3 instant wireless camera and a G3 Flex. Being a long time Blue Iris user, I just wanted to see how they compared as far as implementation and performance, see how easy it is to set up a camera network. Now that we've covered the hardware for 2022, Let's quickly go through how it's all configured to give you a better idea of how I set up my network. First, let's look at the unified device topology. At the controller level, this shows you only the unified devices that are connected. This view doesn't show any non-unified devices such as QNAPs. The next screen shows the entire detail topology, showing you which devices are connected to your network. This can make it really easy to isolate and sometimes troubleshoot problems in your network and gives you a better idea of how everything interacts. On this tab, we can see a list of unified devices making it easy to see the status, the firmware status, IP addresses, and more importantly to me, the ability to quickly customize ports and settings such as profiles and VLANs. Under the client devices, this makes it a breeze to see what's attached to your network and your VLANs. When you're setting up your network or new devices, this tool can really make the task a whole lot easier and show you the detail about each device. For Wi-Fi networks, I'm currently running six SSIDs. I have my main Wi-Fi network that's a multi-band, a second network which is a 2.4 gigahertz only. I have a SSID for each VLAN, such as the family and the IoT networks. I have one multi-band six gigahertz network that supports the 6E standard. And lastly, a gas network. This allows me an extreme amount of control on my Wi-Fi network and it can determine what can access what. All of the wireless SSIDs and assigned switch ports are configured to what Unify calls a network, but other manufacturers called VLANs. I've created three networks and I can create as many as I need to. The three networks I created for my application is, the, of course, the default LAN. Then I added an IoT network and a family network. The current configuration does not allow the VLANs to reach my main LAN, but doesn't block me while I'm on the main LAN to access any of the devices on the VLANs which makes it real easy to manage. I have more equipment and upgrades and additions planned for 2023, including an all SSD TrueNAS server that'll be dedicated to video editing and central storage, 
as well as upgrades for my other network devices. So you want to make sure you check back for updates. Just to clarify, I have no affiliation whatsoever with Ubiquity, and I selected their product because it met my needs. And so far, I've been really pleased with the outcome. You should research what products really work for you, but if you opt for unified devices, be aware that except for the UDM Pro or Pro SE, other devices can be hard to get, and you might have to wait a little bit. Anyway, that's it for today's video, and I hope you found it useful. Please post any questions you may have in the comments, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.